Uh, there we get it. So uh, welcome everyone. And I'll, uh, this is the training aspect of our, our call. Uh, and we do this every Thursday night, thanks to Carol Turngo and Josh Duhon. They started this. It's been, I don't know, it's been over three years. It may be four. I kind of lost track with the pandemic. Somehow time kind of got misplaced. Uh, but uh, just to share with you all, if I've not met you, let me start by uh, introducing myself. My name is Cheryl Cortese. I'm a national marketing director with the Juice Plus Company. And I've been here for uh, over 34 years now. It's going on 35, uh, which is still just an amazement to me. I think I have a bad connection too. But anyway, um, I, I love our business. I love our product. Uh, and I, I really enjoy uh, the whole aspect of every bit of it. Uh, I'm also probably kind of like the mama bear to all of you all because you're part of this organization. And uh, so really want to share with you things that I feel like have made the difference as far as this journey is concerned, not only the, the joyous part, but you know, just the logistics of day-to-day -day business. And what I feel like has been instrumental uh, in my business growing. But before I go there, I want to uh, tell Carol Sands and all of her team how much I appreciate them tonight. I was thinking about Carol today. I think you and your husband came to a first training we did. Was We, we were over at the apartment, I believe, in uh, Hollywood. Uh, that had to be what, Carol, 15 years ago, longer? How long? Well, you unmute yourself. <laughs> it was actually... 18 years ago, Cheryl. Oh, see, that's scary, Carol. You had to say that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I guess the whole point is that we've been all running together for a long time. And uh, what you'll find is that people come and they stay. And they stay because there's, you know, not only a, a wonderful, you know, product, uh, which we love sharing with others and a great foundation for an amazing business, but but also a really great community. And uh, so, Carol, thank you tonight for your story and all the stories uh, that you've shared. I also want to say, I think it was Jeanette that said that uh, you should know what she'd do if this company stopped making the product. Actually, I had been with them for a year or two when Juice Plus was introduced. And we've had Juice Plus almost 30 years. <clears throat> so I was there for a few years before. And when they first came out with it, we didn't really know much about it. Uh, I had never taken any kind of vitamin or mineral supplement because they always upset my stomach. So I felt like, you know, they weren't good for me. <laughs> okay. And I was a little, a little trepidation about this. Uh, but uh, we, you know, we all started uh, taking it. And the first thing I was very excited about is it didn't do anything bad, doesn't feel bad, it didn't upset my stomach, it didn't hurt me in any way, you know, I was really happy about that, that was the first response, and then after about, uh, I guess it was maybe two weeks, three weeks, I woke up one day, and I had a lot of just issues that, you know, made me uncomfortable all the time, I had uh, what they refer to today as fibromyalgia, that could be very painful at times, and so I just had a low energy level, and I woke up one day and I thought, boy, you know, I'm having a really good day today. And it just turned out that, you know, it's been that way for, you know, over 30, about 30 years now. But it got so good as far as the feel good. And because I was not sure that we would continue to market it because it was kind of like in the trial phase. I wanted to tell Jeanette, I actually started ordering an extra box because they didn't drop ship then. You had to order the box. And I would order an extra box each time and hide it in my closet because my assistant, Missy, many of you may know Missy, she would share it with people too. And I was afraid we were going to run out. And, it, and so I looked in the closet one day and I had eight boxes stacked up in there like in a stash. And I thought, okay, if I'm hiding these things, we're going to do well. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it just dawned on me that everybody was going to love it just as much as I did. And and that has been the case. Uh, today, you know, we ship out millions of dollars worth of Juice Plus every month. Actually, this organization, your, your story, this is part of your story. We as a team market over $10 million worth of Juice Plus every month. So just think how many people are loving it and enjoying it because of, you know, 
and not only your love for it and your passion to share with other people, but your courage to do so as well, you know, to share with people. And the other thing I noticed, and I hear this in the stories, I love the stories because they're the foundation, but it's not often that you hear somebody say, oh, I decided to join because, you know, they had a beautiful website or they this or that. It's always something like, well, somebody who I knew shared it with me and I didn't think it was going to be a business. I see Cheryl kind of smiling right there because it's kind of her story and many of us, uh, everyone's story. And I just shared it with people I cared about. And before long, they were talking to people. And, and from a grassroots standpoint, then you find that you've got a business. And many people grow up into big business with us that way. Some people start because they realize the power of the product. Some people like myself, I, uh, I was in a financial situation as being suddenly single that was rather terrifying and I really needed some additional income. And then I just happened to be lucky enough uh, that this was the company and the product that did it for us. So what I wanted to do tonight was just talk about the very basics of things that if you just have these skills acquired, and realize basically what your job description is, you might say, then all the other things that go along with it, the, all the wonderful you know, uh, research and uh, stories, we, you know, even this call, uh, this is on a YouTube channel under Carol Turnbow's name, but you can go back over the past, you know, through three, maybe even almost four years and it's cataloged as far as stories, you, you just, you'll be amazed at all the variations. And, and basically for the product, what we know is that the body gets the foundation to do whatever it needs to do to help itself. I think we were meant to be healing machines and if you've got the right input, the body knows how to use it and what to do with it. So there, there's lots of information. There's great things coming up all the time. Uh, you know, on our website, there is a, you know, a place for us to go and, and look at our numbers and all of those sorts of things. But, you know, all that has evolved over the years. So let's look at what basic things would have to be the skills that you would want to put together uh, to make sure that you've got that foundation that no matter what else is going on, you can build a very powerful business. One of the things that was really um, kind of a surprise to me over the years was that I didn't look at this in the beginning as something that could be the powerful business that it is. It began to grow into that. And then I realized, you know, this is this. Did we lose her? Is she froze? She's frozen for me. Okay, yeah. frozen for me too. We'll yeah, give her a she, she did. She said she had a bad connection. She did come back to us, Cheryl. Cheryl, time to run a training. <laughs> Josh, I think you're the great, the greatest person for it here. Fundamental skills, building your juice. Oh, hold on, I just heard her. She popped off. She'll come right back on. We'll give her a second. I don't know. I don't know. There she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think I'm still connected, Carol, or do I? Need yeah, it? you're good. I can hear you, Cheryl. We can hear it's you good. now. Bro, it's good. Okay. So I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening with the internet. This has been happening for the last couple of days where it just pops off. So, but it seems to come back. So anyway, let's talk about. <clears throat> What are the foundational things that you would need to become skilled in to, to know that would be, if you do these things, if you've got these skills down, then you've got it all. Well, number one is that we're basically storytellers. Uh, we tell a story about our product and about our business. So we're paid storytellers, basically. And then we share that story and create as much exposure as possible. So if you think about that, then, you know, you've got a product story and a business story. And the first thing I do with a new team member, and one of the first things that my 
uh, sponsor did with me was let's look at what your story is because as soon as you make a decision to acquire the product or to become a partner with the company, you've got a story because you have a desire. So story would be important. So if you can look at how you can simply put your story together, very something that's very short, just enough. We talk about it almost as the commercial of what you have to offer so that it creates interest and help your new team member do the same thing. That's foundational. And that's uh, something that you can do without any type of tech support, even though there's a lot there, but <clears throat> that's one thing. The other would be to be able to uh, really walk yourself and then help somebody else walk up through the compensation plan. So to do that, all you have to do is be able to acquire customers and acquire team members, uh, be able to log them on as far as, you know, your new customer putting them on, you know, on, on the computer with the company, uh, your new team member doing the same, and then help that person move up through the compensation plan. Uh, so you've got your story, your product story, and your business story, uh, your ability to input customers and new team members. The next thing would be to help your new team members do the same. And then, of course, help you, be you become qualified, have a qualified business, teach your new team member to have a qualified business, and grow up to that sales coordinator position, and then repeat. So that's really our whole business is just those few logistics. You're a customer, because then what happens? You know, our business is one that it's really a transfer of feeling. Uh, people listen to your feelings before they do facts or figures or, or uh, information or all of that sort of thing. It's the feeling they respond to first. So how much exposure can you create and share your heart story? Uh, that's going to be foundational. And so that's why it's so important that the product be, a, that you're, I guess you would say it this way, that you're a product of the product. And then as you, you know, grow into your business story, and we talked about that last week, but I'll highlight that again. The business story is really, again, the description of the potential of what you see for yourself, uh, the desire that you have uh, as far as your sharing that you're going to share with other people, the desire you have for what this is going to be from a business standpoint. And it's very easy in a very short period of time to really fall in love with that marketing model as well. So many things go into that. Uh, the fact that, you know, the freedoms that come with it, the freedom to design your business as you choose, uh, the freedom to help other people do the same, the joy of helping other people do well and step out of financial fear or have more time or be able to contribute to things they want to contribute to. So <clears throat> there's a lot that goes around falling in love with the marketing plan itself. Then <clears throat> again, to as soon as you become a qualifying sales coordinator, uh, you want to really look at qualifying your business uh, so that you have that, that's foundational. <clears throat> you are the model. People are going to look to you and do exactly what you do. So <clears throat> you want to get those four things or five things, just those few things, <clears throat> excuse me. I used to have uh, one of our mentors, uh, my sponsor, Jeff Roberti and I, uh, it was uh, Larry Thompson used to always say, you don't need to know <clears throat> huge amounts of information. You just need to have a few basic skills. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's talk about, first of all, the story. And again, talking about both product story and business story. But taking that story, <clears throat> sharing it with others, and then turning around and helping your new team member not only find their story right away, but also uh, help them uh, start a new person in their business as well. And so everything you do is going to be something that you didn't turn around and teach someone else to do. <clears throat> One of the things Jeff used to say to me was, you know, and if we were asked to train or to share at an event or something, he said, you don't have to learn anything except what you did. Just tell people what you do. That's all you have to do is tell people what you do. 
<clears throat> so if you can get that foundational, those foundational skills down right away, then it's just a matter of telling and sharing with people what to do. So <clears throat> the first thing that you want to do is really look at your product story, your business story, and helping someone else find their product story and business story. And I, being a teacher in my previous life, I guess you would say, uh, before I did this, I taught for a number of years, kindergarten, and then on to university. So I give homework. That's what teachers do. So my new person is going to get the homework, but it'll be pretty much exactly what Jeff had me do from the beginning. So whether it was 34 years ago or today, I still use the same format. And so basically it goes out to people in homework sheets. And, and now we send this off, of course, on computer. And it's three pages. And you might want to make notes uh, for yourself here just to go over your own story. And the first thing would be, you know, what attracted you to the Juice Plus product? And again, people are going to listen to your feelings. So it wasn't the, uh, the number of fruits and vegetables, most likely. There was probably something uh, that was in your heart or your mind that you wanted to make sure that you uh, took care of yourself. Uh, you know, what was it? Uh, you know, what attracted you to Juice Plus? And why did you decide that you wanted to take it? Why are you taking it today? For myself, uh, as I, I said earlier, I wasn't attracted at first uh, because I had a little bit of a fear of the whole supplement world. It hadn't worked well for me. Uh, but then I looked around and the people who were consuming it, you know, they looked good. They looked like they felt good. I never felt good. Uh, and actually Sue Burdick who was uh, one of my peers you know she was looking good and I said Sue what what are you doing and she says it's that juice plus it's really feels good and I thought you know you can't let these women get too far ahead of you <laughs> she's looking good so anyway I decided as I said that that we would I would try it and what happened and I shared that with you was that I had you know quite an interesting response but what then continued to happen, I had a lot of fear that went around uh, my family's health. Uh, my parents left very early, you know, people got sick and they didn't get well and they had serious diseases. So I felt like those health monsters were nipping at my heels all the time. And Juice Plus really began to give me that peace of mind and that edge as far as my own physical health. So if I were to share, and when I do share with people, it's pretty much that story was that, you know, I didn't really realize the power of it when I came across it. But then the fears that I had about my own genetic makeup uh, really began to be soothed. And then it gave me huge peace of mind because the well-being that came along with it. So there are many different ways that people respond. Some people just know they're not getting enough fruits and vegetables. Uh, some people want to make sure that they're protected. It's like, uh, you know, a safety net. But whatever it is, it needs to be from your heart. And you need to ask that new person. And what I do is I become the secretary for someone. And I just say, I'm going to ask you these questions that I want you to tell me from your heart. What attracted you? Why did you decide to take it? And the next question would be, why will you take it forever? Well, if I hid it in my closet, okay, and it did so many good things, I didn't want to go back to any of that. I didn't want to go back to uh, the difficulties that I had before, and I wanted to keep that edge. And so I'm not missed it a day because I want that feel good the rest of my life. It's important to have that included in the story though, because what you're doing is you're pre-framing uh, for someone to make this a lifestyle change. And so as you share that story with people and you share your heart and the beauty of this is there doesn't have to be a script of any kind. It is your heart, it's your heart story. And that's what people connect to as you're feeling. And so again, the feeling, but pre-framing with, for that person, for it to be a lifestyle change, because it's something you would never give up. I look at it as part of my food budget, and that it is, you know, I hope to eat every every day, and so this is part of that. The next thing, too, then we talk about the business story. 
What attracted you to the Juice Plus business? And why are you here? You know, why did you decide to become a partner? As soon as you make that decision, and we talked about this last week too, but I wanted to underscore it because again, it's foundational, uh, is that <clears throat> that whatever it was, whatever it is that attracts you, and you want to again peel away the layers to get to the point where it is the heart story, uh, is what's going to attract someone else. And always from the very beginning, it's potential. Now, as you grow up in it, that potential will expand. You'll see that it can be much, much more than maybe that very first thing that really you were drawn to. Uh, for me, uh, I really was in a situation where even teaching and teaching on university level, I knew I could not afford to send my own children to college with what I was able to create from an income standpoint. I wanted that. I wanted that because that was very important to my own personal standards for my family. Uh, there were things that I really, and I wanted to be able to step out of financial fear. I had huge fear of not being able to really take care of us. And my parents were gone by that time. There was no backup. So <clears throat> really the, the whole business, the draw to the business was to give me a financial edge. And I didn't think about it as a full-time career. But I thought about it as something that could really make a difference for us and that I was, I was scared at that time and I wanted to be able to be free of that. I wanted to be the one who was in control and not fear being in control of me. So whatever it is that attracts you, you know, and think about it, what, what did attract you? What does attract you? Um, what is it that you see for yourself? The question many times that I'll ask a new team member is, you know, if, if this, let's say, you know, blank wall here could be your financial picture over the next three years, five years, what would be in that picture? Uh, what would you want for yourself and your family? Uh, what would feel good? And there are usually many responses. And again, it's either they're going to be able to expand to do things that they couldn't do otherwise. You've heard many stories on this call as well as others where people want to be able to make that difference uh, in their lives. And it's usually not big, huge things. It's not mansions or big cars or boats. It's usually something that's going to, you know, give them a vacation, send the child to private school, uh, be able to cover the house note or help to ease the burden of whatever the financial situation is. It could be time that so many people uh, they may be able to create a living, but they have no time. It could be that they just want to be able to contribute and to do something uh, that has huge purpose with it. So helping that person discover the heart feeling of the potential of what they desire is huge in helping someone get started. Uh, because it's been proven, it's been studied, that people respond more to potential than they do actual gain. So for me to say to you, Jeff for Birdie makes close to a half a million dollars a month after he's been at this 35 years, and he is one of the largest income earners in this profession. Now, that's very impressive because that validates that this is, is possible. But most people can't identify with that because it's such a far reach and it's years down the road that they can identify. They'll identify with the brand new person or your person's, your person, your desire for what it is you see that you're working toward and the desires they have, they'll step into that potential. So this is huge in the business story. And also, you know, if we go back and this is something we shared a couple of weeks ago, uh, people who in our organization had taken a course by Darren Hardy um, which really talked about, you know, what people are drawn to today. Uh, I was actually talking with Sharon Rankin. She and I, I think she started a year before I did or two. She's been at this, I think, 37 years, okay, with the Juice Plus Company. And we were saying, you know, we look back 30 years and money was the first thing. Uh, and we are in business to create income. You want to be successful and it's unlimited here as far as success. But money is, and it's important because we all have that responsibility to create a living and we want to be able to do that comfortably and we're entitled to. But there are other things that come into play now that we didn't see really then. 
it's people really wanting to be part of something that has a purpose, that has a belonging, that has a community. Uh, it's being like-minded. It's the whole personal growth aspect of it as well. So this comes together very, very well. And when people are vulnerable enough, and I find that today, that we see that, and I think it's one of the reasons that our community has grown to be the supportive community that it is, is that when they're vulnerable enough to share what it is they desire, want, or need, or feel they see here, then other people identify and they become part of it. So, you know, that question in helping a new team member look at how they're going to share this with people is what is it that you want to achieve for yourself and your family? That's one of the questions here with our Juice Plus business. What, what would you like to see happen if anything could? And so then that's going to be the why. That's where we find it. Uh, and that's what we're going to stay connected to with that person. The other thing that came out that we talked a lot about with our national marketing director team out of these conversations about what people are looking for today is people want to be able to truly take pride in what they do. They want to be able to be proud of it. And so, you know, our, our NMD team did it. We'll do it with you all if you like. We can do it, you know, start tonight, but, you know, go on into the next week or two. And it's something that I always did with our Q School advanced training is to write down 30 things that you're really proud of in relation to your business. And, you know, some of those six or eight, 10 maybe can be around your product, but what about the profession? Uh, what really draws you? What do you take pride in as far as what you do? This, this really gives you something too, to enhance that business story is to be able to share with people, I'm really proud of what I do because it could be the, the fact that people come together in a community that's very supportive and like-minded. Uh, it could be so many different things. It could be the fact that you have the joy of helping people step out of financial fear. Uh, but whatever it is, and, and if, you, if you really push yourself, okay, to write down 30 things, you'll be amazed at, and, and really what you're doing is you're searching your feelings and know that people are going to listen to feelings before they do facts, before they want to know or even before they ask about how are we paid? How does the pay plan work? All of those things are available, but it's that part where the heart gets connected on purpose, uh, you know, why, what it is that attracted you, what got you, so to speak, uh, because before you even swallow the product, before you even start your business or begin to put together a team, then there is a desire and that desire becomes the business story for people to identify with. And we've also determined too that that story becomes actually part of what we would call the close. If, you're, if you look at the old term of close, you're closing for the uh, sale of the product, you're closing to acquire a new partner, it's really them identifying uh, with what you have to offer and they feel like, yes, I want part of that. I want to be part of that. I want to secure my health and I want to secure my future. And that is through heart connection. So a very important foundational skill. And so if that, if you're, if you really, you know, investigate that, work on it, um, work on it with your team members as you bring them on, you know, it's, it's going to just be huge. And then, of course, it's the courage to share with other people that story. And it doesn't have to be, you know, spit out in exactly, I guess you would say, the way it's written. Uh, many times I'll be in conversation with people I've met, people I know, and it might be aspects of it, you know, that are used. But if you have it down, if you have it written down, and it's short, it's to the point, it's truly from your heart then when you have those conversations, it's gonna happen normally and naturally. And it's not really anything that can be scripted because everybody's story will be a little different. At the end of this homework page, the last thing I have written on it, because I've found this works very well is you help people put a team together because remember the skills are acquire customers, be able to you know, log them in and get them into the company, uh, be able to sign up team members, 
and realize your job description is how big a team can you build, you know, to stretch out and put your arms around the world, literally, because not any of us can carry the customer load that it would take to really put together uh, a powerful business, but everybody doing their part makes a, a massive business. So at the end of this page, once we've discovered the story, it'll be choose 15 people that you know that you would like to work with as partners. And it's people that you like and admire, like, love, or admire. I have found that people that admire each other tend to think alike. So if a person can tell me, you know, and I say, this is just a dream team right now. We don't have to call these people immediately. We don't have to, uh, you know, do anything right now except dream. And so who would your dream team be? Uh, if you could get up in the morning and work with anybody in the world, who, who would it be? And so we put down and on the next page, it's just, it's just 15 lines, okay? And I'm gonna have them put down the 15 people uh, with their phone numbers or their, the way in which we're going to contact them. And then on the very last page, there's what we call a profile sheet. Now, all this is, is the questions that Jeff would ask me about the person that we were gonna to talk to. We would do a little briefing right before we spoke to them either in person on a three-way call. Uh, today, it's on a Zoom call most of the time. Uh, and I love that part. I love now that we have Zoom and we can meet people anywhere, across town, across the world, uh, anywhere, and have the conversation about our love for the product and our love for the business, why it made sense to us, why we wanted to be customers, what we love about our product, and what we love about our business and why we're proud of it. The profile sheet is just so that if I'm coming behind my new team member, as we put their team together, and I'm going to be telling the story. This is the only profession in the world, I think, where we go to work for someone before they go to work, okay? And I really don't even see it as work, but creating new friendships and relationships. Then I'd like to know enough about the person. And again, as I said, when I started, Jeff would just say, he would ask me these things right before we got on the line. But I find if we can have this conversation, it's important to help my new person, <clears throat> look at what we're looking for, uh, you know, as we begin to put the team together. So I'm going to ask for their name, their occupation, are they entrepreneurial, uh, are they health conscious, are they high energy, are they self-motivated, are they money motivated, do they like to help other people, are they married with children, uh, just so we would know about talking about the children's health study or the children happy, or do they go on now, the uh, healthy start for families and the spouse's occupation. And then the most important question is what do you like, love, or admire about this person? Because as I said, I've found that people who admire each other think alike. So if I've got 15 names of somebody, you know, that is just starting, and we're going to talk about those 15 people and how we would go about speaking to them together. There's almost always three or four new team members in that list. And it's really important if we're going to look at structure. This is another thing that's very foundational. And I think it is missed many times as people begin to grow up their businesses is that you want to have as many people sponsored directly to you as possible. So you want as much our marketing plan let you do that. You know, you have unlimited ability to be as wide as you choose to be in our business. Many companies do limit you as far as that initial, you know, distributor, partner, sponsorship, but we don't. It's to infinity. You can have as many as you choose and you want to have as many as possible. So you want that first, you know, few weeks and, and right away. Uh, you want new team members for your person because then that people will get together and have the joy of doing it together as well as, again, helping each other, supporting each other. And it'll, it will congeal much faster might be the way to say it. So you're going to go really, really wide. So you want to think about that as being foundational to future growth. Some people do it quickly. Some people do a few every month or one or two or three every month for a while, but eventually it always winds up wide if the business is going to be very powerful. So it's something you want to think of from the very beginning. Now, 
at this point, we want to do it as quickly as possible. So now we've got the new person's order in, we've got their story down, uh, we've got uh, the desire of who they would like to work with. The other thing I encourage people to do, and we've heard it forever, but it does work, is you want to just start making lists for yourself. Doesn't mean that you know you have to call anybody right away or anything, but you want to make a list of everybody you can think of that eats, breathes, okay, would, you know, and don't prejudge or predetermine whether they want your product or they want your business. The idea for the list is to take those names off your head, okay, because usually we have a few people that we're relatively close to that kind of stay in the forefront all the time. So you want that list to want to take those people and put them on the list and then other people will come to mind. And that list <clears throat> can be enormous. You know, it can be endless uh, and you can always add to it. I have found that even to this day, I have not had the time <laughs> to go through that entire list, my first beginning list. <clears throat> so there are always people on it somewhere. And the reason is that once someone decides they want to be part of your business, then they're going to open you to a whole new world of people that you wouldn't know. So you go do that for a while. And then you've got another one. You go do that for a while. And then you're growing team, growing team, growing team. So you want to, first of all, have that list of the people that you really want to be, I guess you would say, your board of directors for the business that you're going to grow. And you want to start getting that team together and add names to it. Now, the other things that will follow will be, as I said, you're going to grow up through the marketing model. Uh, one thing that I want us to do on this call here in the next week or two is go through the actual marketing plan itself, uh, just to make sure that everybody's got a really good idea of, you know, how you go from partner to partner plus to QSC, which is a qualifying sales coordinator to sales coordinator. Sales coordinator is a top commission position. So that's your first goal really is because we always do the same thing. We share the story, product and business. We talk to people that are starting our business about putting their team together and we help them do that. And then the goal is take a person to sales coordinator, yourself to sales coordinator, take people to sales coordinator. Continue to do that over and over and over as wide as possible and then deep right away too. And we'll talk about that next week. But we want to then cover those other things in the toolbox, which would be go to QSC. What does that look like? Uh, then turn around and go to sales coordinator. In that process there, that's when you want to become very clear on what a qualified business looks like. That is another skill that is very important to you know really get proficient at because once your business is qualified which means basically 1800 in 1800 dollars in production uh, on a monthly basis and I'll explain that on you know this next call we'll talk about qualification but once your business is qualified you're that that means you'll never leave any money on the table and you're truly in business at that point and then the sales coordinator position gives you the largest return as far as commission and retail profit. So once you do that and you really get clear on those steps to do that, then it's just a matter of doing that over and over and over with the people that become part of your frontline team, those people that you help put their team together with right away, the people beneath them. And then that expands and grows in just an exponential fashion that becomes fascinating. Uh, and it would be really important to really, as I said, get those skills down. So the thing that I would like to do for next week is that, again, I would encourage you, and we'll go back to that, write down 30 things that you're really proud of as far as this profession is concerned. And next week, we'll come to this call with a report from you all, it'll be your turn to talk on what you're really proud of because we want to incorporate that in your business story as well. And then from there, we'll go to the marketing 
plan itself, go through the steps and uh, really get clear on, you know, how you go from position to position. Uh, and we've got some, you know, thoughts on that as well. And then after that, talk about qualification and what qualification is like for each one of those positions as you grow up through the marketing model and just get continue to get very proficient at those basic things. And whatever else comes along as far as, uh, you know, all of the information that comes behind on uh, your virtual office, Juice Plus, you know, the My Juice Plus, which will be the, the new um, site, uh, as far as our virtual office is concerned, as that grows, uh, there'll be huge amounts of information. But if you have the basics down, you can do it anywhere, anytime, uh, you know, whether it's person to person, a group, a person, uh, a group of persons, okay, uh, a virtual event, a, um, you know, an event that's very large, like a mini conference, a boot camp, uh, a large conference. Uh, but those basic skills, once in place, and once you feel confident about that, then, you know, you're destined for whatever uh, amount and size of business that you desire. And it's, I have found that these things have been foundational my whole 34 years. It didn't matter, you know, where the, you know, the, what the site was like. We didn't have any type of site for at least half of my career uh, from a virtual standpoint. So, but it's the basics work. And, you know, if we look at uh, where we are today, uh, I just feel like we've never been in a better place to not only be of service to mankind, uh, but our product is very relevant. Everybody wants it. There's huge interest in it. Uh, our business is one that is very flexible. And as people have reevaluated how they want to live their lives, the flexibility of time and, you know, how they're going to spend that time uh, has become, you know, much more. Uh, I guess you would say, scrutinized by how people are going to function in the work world today. And so we're, we're a hot ticket, really, uh, but it's just going to be a matter of putting that team together. And I found that once I was real clear on what my daily method of operation needed to be and the foundational things that were in place, I knew I could repeat that over and over. And the fact that I'm repeating it over and over with people, it's a new person every time, you know, it's a new, but that means it's a new story. It's a new energy. Uh, it all continues to fuel itself all the time. And that's the beauty of it is, you know, that good feeling that goes along with it too, what we call emotional revenue. So I've talked at you about 10 minutes to, to over, okay? But uh, let's look forward to next week, um, really going through um, what the things are that you're proud of. Uh, about your profession so we can really begin to identify um, not only why people would find us desirable but our belief in what we have to offer and again the joy of being part of something that is very very powerful for other people to take part in and realize the value of our profession uh, the um, you know just the attractiveness of it as well and the, the desire that people have uh, to be in control of their lives uh, more so than maybe they've been in the past. So it's been a joy to be here with everybody. Thank you, Carol Sand, for all of your input tonight. And uh, over the next two weeks, three weeks, uh, pay plan and qualification will be our, our goal and what you're proud of. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. night. Thank you. Oh, thank you so thank much. You awesome, thank you. Awesome, Cheryl. Awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Good night, Cheryl. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night.